How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Someone is doing something sneaky in crypto right now. Now that's always the case, but I want to cover that here for you today because someone is buying significant amounts of Bitcoin and I want to shed some light on it, talk about that, talk about price action as well, and talk about something that probably isn't super positive for Binance, but I want to cover that. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on that bell notification underneath the video. Be careful of scammers in the comment section. If you want, you can check out the links to Margex where you can trade on leverage. And there are also links down there to Moomoo in case you want to get a lot of free stocks and possibly a ton of free money. You can check that link out, deposit $100 and get those stocks. I, I do like Moomoo as well too, so check that out. And if you want to know what I'm buying and selling, you can check out the Patreon. So Bitcoin is down 1.4% in the last 24 hours. Ethereum's down 2.3%. Overall, dominance is ticking up up a little bit though we're seeing some weakness in the crypto market the nasdaq's up about one percent though so a little bit odd to see that that kind of difference in the markets uh that type of uncorrelation or uh inverse correlation but you can start to see the dominance is ticking up we fell down after the ripple announcement last week went from about 51.5% down to just under 50%. However, we bounced off that and are starting to move back up, which I think is probably a positive thing for the dominance. Obviously, you do need to have cool offs when you move up significantly. Now, I could always be wrong, right? I do have some altcoins, but keep in mind, we've been pretty much up only. Uh, we've been up, consolidation, up, consolidation. So I'd not be surprised to see that continue throughout the rest of the year. This is a pre-having year and that's typically what happens. Now, Bitcoin's price itself has fallen a little bit over the last couple hours. You can see here, I, I drew this yesterday. We had lower, uh, we had higher lows and higher highs and we had held support pretty well around 30,000. Now keep in mind, we did fall down below it for a short period of time, a couple of times. And that's what we did today. We fell below it. Now we're still a little bit below it. But if we hold this $30,000 mark, I think that would be positive. Even if we fall below it, I see it as a buying opportunity. I want to personally buy more Bitcoin anyway. So I'm happy if we fall back down 27, 28, 29,000. I'm happy if that happens. Uh, I'd love to pick up some more crypto at this point. Now, I've been talking about BlackRock getting into crypto. I've been talking about Fidelity, all these large entities, all these large managers of money trying to get into crypto. And we're starting to see more and more inflows coming into the crypto market. For the last four weeks, we've seen $100 million every single week. 100 to $250 million going into almost specifically Bitcoin. Digital asset fund flows flew uh, into the crypto market again this week with $137 million. Then $140 million going into Bitcoin. We had a little bit come out of Ethereum. Uh, and a little bit come out of short Bitcoin. A little bit going into Solana, Litecoin, Cardano, Polygon, those types of things. But mostly just going into Bitcoin. 99% of it going into Bitcoin. Same thing that we've seen for the last couple weeks. Now, what's so interesting about this is we are actually seeing miners uh, selling or transferring a lot to exchanges recently. Through Glassnode, you can see just this was last week. A ton of Bitcoin going to exchanges, about 71,000 Bitcoin. Now, the price really didn't move last week up or down very much at all. If 71,000 Bitcoin was put on the market at one time and tried to sell, obviously that would push down the price a good amount. Um, and that's not really what's happening. So the cool thing is we we're seeing a lot of people buying the dip here. A record 3.8% of the Bitcoin supply last moved at $30,000, $30.2,000. So what does this tell us? Well, this basically, this chart shows the price that Bitcoin has been bought at different levels uh, or the amount of Bitcoin that's been bought at different prices. So we're right around this level right now, $30,000. And we have a record amount of Bitcoin changing hands. And this is not accounting for transfers that this actually takes that out of the equation so these are actual buys we saw a lot around that sixteen thousand dollar mark when we were basically at the bottom as well and you see barely any on the extremes right you don't see many people buying 
at 67,000 because we we're there for such a short period of time. But where we consolidate, a lot of people start buying. And that's what's so interesting to me is that we're seeing all this Bitcoin transferred to the exchanges from miners. It's obviously being bought OTC by some big entities, the micro strategies of the world, probably the Black Rocks and the Fidelities of the world as well. And we're seeing a lot exchange too. So a lot of people selling, but a lot of people are buying. It's surprising how many people are buying, getting ready for the next bull run. And it makes sense with everything getting better on the macro scale. And with so much cash sitting around, it's really hard if you have a lot of cash to just sit and watch assets go up and up and up and you're getting 5%, 4% in a treasury or bank account. It's really hard to see assets go up 50, 60, 100% uh, in a year. And that's what we've been seeing this year. So with $5.5 trillion in cash, yeah, it's burning a hole in some people's pockets. And we've seen that with so many different Bitcoin related stocks and crypto related stocks, so many different large companies trying to get into that. And I said in yesterday's video where I talk about all the things happening this week, I really want to watch some of the crypto related stocks and how they compare to Bitcoin. Right now, GBTC is up about 1% when Bitcoin is down about 1.2%. So again, GBTC outperforming, the discounts getting smaller and smaller. We can look at a different stock too, CLSK stock. This one down a little bit, 0.58%. Earlier it was up 7% when Bitcoin was actually down a little bit on the day. How about coin stock? Coin stock also down 0.23%. So down a little bit, but less than the overall market. So we're continuing to see this kind of outperformance from crypto related companies. Now, that's great, but it might be a little bit of time before we actually see that translate into the price of crypto, right? We have a while before the next halving. It's getting closer and closer, but we still have months and months to wait. So be ready, have your tap dancing shoes on, as some people like to say, make sure that you have some cash on the sidelines. I think that makes sense. I wanna cover something that's that could be another big problem for crypto uh, and this is not spring fud i don't i don't like that term i think it, a lot of people just hear fud and they think automatically that it's not worth talking about or that's not truthful but fud is fear uncertainty and doubt and honestly you can have fud that is very constructive and it's good for people to hear fud because they actually know what's happening people should be fearful of bad things happening to large exchanges or bad things happening to their exchange. So I hope nothing's wrong with Binance personally, but this is a little bit alarming. CZ writes on Twitter, I learned today that a guy who is consistently spreading FUD about Binance is doing that just because he was he pitched his project to Binance and they didn't actually invest or Binance Labs and they didn't invest. Feel really sad for him. I hope he eventually finds his way out of it and actually focuses on his own project. And then he does a little crying face laughing. Now, I think that this is a little bit misleading and Adam does too. It's literally misleading. Like he's trying to lead away from what Adam's actually talking about. Adam is obviously a big investor in crypto, big account on Twitter, has been really pushing out a lot of content on Binance and a lot of the issues that are coming up. But he says he's not wrong. On a previous project, we did pitch Binance as there was uh, not an issue with them before. I publicly pivoted away from that, a complaint, a compliant exchange model to a different business that went forward with other partners that Binance would not have been a fit for. However, when I ask hard questions, instead of engage on the content, uh, CZ wants to dox old convos in an attempt to, to discredit my points and shift away shift direction away. It's the same game of attacks and intimidation that Binance has repeatedly used on journalists. You can believe I'm mad at Binance for a project I pivoted from last year. That's fine. That doesn't change the fact that CZ's own internal tweets list that profit is down while he lies to the public. Doesn't change the fact that Sun has him by the balls with TUSD. Doesn't change that their U.S. CEO hasn't tweeted in about five months. Doesn't change that their their Binance Cash wallet ran out of funds. Doesn't change that Sun owned TUSD via shell companies. What it does tell you is CZ is scared. 
When you can't challenge the facts, you challenge the person. So pretty interesting. I think that that's probably a bad sign too. Like if someone's criticizing you for something that you do at your business or pointing out something where you seem to be lying, like two different things literally can't be true at the same time. They're mutually exclusive. And someone points that out and then you just start attacking them for something else totally unrelated without actually talking about what they're bringing up, which is a valid concern. I think that's probably a red flag. And in crypto where there's smoke, there's usually fire. But thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I would, I would suggest taking your crypto out of Binance. I know I say that a lot, but at this point, I don't see a big benefit of keeping it on the exchange. And honestly, I think most of us should just hold our own keys unless you're actively trading, in which case then you should just have a small percentage of your crypto, obviously, on some kind of exchange or in a hot wallet and then just use a DEX. I think that's probably the best way to go. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Check out the links underneath the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for hitting subscribe and the like button as well. Bye.